All right. So today I want to talk about how we're going to use Python to solve a first order differential equation. So our goal in, in this video is to find a solution to this differential equation defined up here, f prime of x equals 3x squared plus 12x minus 4, with the initial condition f of minus 8 equals minus 120. Then plot the solution and find where f of x is equal to 0. So the way we, we think about differential equations is we have this initial point, f of minus 8 equals minus 120. That is a point we know, everything about it. We know the function value and where it is. And we know the derivative, which tells us where the function is pointing. So if you look in the figure here, we have the, the initial red dot, f of x0. That's what we know. And we are pointing in the direction of the derivative. And we take a little step in that direction. That gives us a new function value. We calculate the derivative there, take another step, calculate the derivative there, take another step, uh, etc. So that's the foundation of numerical solvers for differential equations. And the one we'll talk about in uh, depth today is solve IVP. So this is a, a relatively new function in SciPy, uh, relative in like the last couple of years. And let's take a look at how, how to use it. So we have uh, the solve IVP function. It takes a function that um, it, I will get to what it is down here. We need a t-span to integrate over and the initial condition. All right, so the function, let's look here, solves this equation, dy dt equals f of t comma y. And ours is written really as like dy dx, so we'll have to do this translation in our heads that t is equal to x. It really means some set of dependent variables with respect to some set of independent or some independent variable. And the function has this signature, t comma y. In our case, it will be x comma y. And it, this is the initial value. So today, we're only going to look at a single equation, but this can also be a system of, of ordinary differential equations. Then the t-span, this is a tuple of two values, and it is the initial value and the final value. So we're given t0. Here, it's minus 8. That's really x0. And we have to pick a tf that, uh, that we'll look at. And then y0 is an array of the initial conditions. All right, so good morning, Laurent. It's good morning for me. So let's look at um, how, how to directly apply it. So the first thing we have to do is define a function for the ODE up here. So let's do that, def ODE x comma y. And we have to return 3x squared in Python, the x squared is this uh, double star, not, not the caret. That's a bitwise operator. All right, that is our definition of the ODE. Maybe we'll call this f prime just for uh, being explicit, that f prime of x is equal to 3 times x squared plus 12x minus 4. All right, and then let's say t span. This is going to be the initial time, which is minus 8 or uh, initial x. And we have to pick a, a range to integrate over. Uh, I don't know what a good range is off the top of my head yet, so we'll we'll pick 4 um, for starting. And then um, let's say, let's call it f0. That's going to be the initial, uh, initial condition at minus 8, and that's equal to minus 20. And so we make this uh, just this uh, single tuple. And then we make a solution equals solve IVP. So we're going to we're going to save the output of solve IVP in the variable SOL. So we have to give this f prime, and then t span, and then f zero. And that that's it. If we solve this, then uh, when you run it, we find that the solution is this kind of fancy structure. It says that it successfully solved. We have an array of t values, we have an array of y values, and we can uh, start to plot this. All right, so let's plot it. Plot dot plot sol dot t sol dot y zero. And the reason I do um, bracket zero here is if you look at what y is, it's an array, and it's a 2D array. So we have a 2D array with one row in it, and to plot it, we have to extract out this uh, this row here. 
and so that that's what happens here and let's put um, blue circles and make a dot all right so that that is our solution and it doesn't look very nice um, it has a couple of points here and then a really big step here and a couple of steps here and uh, the first maybe key point to take away from solve IVP is if you don't tell it what to do it just does what it needs to do to get a good accurate solution at the end point and it is it's not really thinking about what happens in the middle like what happened in this big step the solver was able to make a big step and not lose any accuracy so it did but that doesn't really help you understand what happens in here so we have to be more more explicit uh, and tell the solver what to do so let's uh, let's remedy that and let's evaluate the solution on a dense array of points from uh, minus 8 to 4. So I like to do it uh, maybe like this, x equals np dot linspace. And let's unpack the t-span argument into it. All right, so t-span up here we set to be this, uh, this tuple from minus 8 to 4. And this, this little syntax star t-span will use the first one as the starting point and the second one as the end point. And now let's resolve this and, uh, and add that in there. Um, let's see. All right, so we need to add f prime, t span, f zero, and now we're going to add t eval equals x. And let's copy this. We'll just go ahead and plot this directly, and I'm going to change these to dots. All right, so all we did was add this new thing. And what this does is it evaluates the solution at these points. It does not make the integrator take those steps yet, and you'll see why I'm, why I'm mentioning it now. Now we see a nice smooth uh, plot in here, and you can see the solution's been evaluated at each one of these steps. Okay, so that achieves our first goal, which is we have a solution. And how do, how do we know it's a solution? Well, we, we know it starts at minus 8 and minus 120. That was the initial condition. And uh, we could calculate derivatives and see how well it fits. Um, that's, that's sort of a fun exercise to do. How do you know this is the right solution? Um, but the, the easiest one we can check is that it starts at the right place and we have a plot that goes over this range. So where is it equal to zero? Well, here's our zero. Let's, let's add a, maybe a, a axe h line at zero. So we can see where, where they are. There's one here around minus six, one here around minus two, one here around two. And our goal is to leverage solve IVP as much as we can to get these. So you could build an interpolator on this and then use f-solve on each one, um, but we're not going to do that. Instead, I want to show you how to use an event uh, so that we can uh, leverage the solve IVP. So let's go back to the documentation. So there is this argument events that we're going to look at, and let's find it down here. Events um, takes a callable or a list of callables, so that means in our words a function, and it has the same signature as the ODE, so it's going to go uh, t comma y, and whenever the event is equal to zero, that's going to trigger an event, and it will have um, it will record it. So we, we just need to set up a function where the event is defined like this, and then it will, it will track each time it crosses zero. Now, an important point here is that the solver looks for a sign change over each step. And so if multiple zero crossings occur within one step, events may be missed. So we're gonna look at that um, right now. All right, so we can go back to here. So let's define an event function. This is going to say look like this. And I want to know when is y equal to 0, so we just return y. And anytime y is equal to 0, uh, then, then we get an event that will be triggered. 
And here you, it looks like we have three of them. So let's try this out. F prime. Events equals event. And let's run it. All right, so successfully reached the end. Um, but here's the a problem that we see. T events has only got one zero in it around minus six. And it doesn't help if we add T eval in here. That does give us 50, uh, 50 T points, but we still only have one, one event. And the problem is, is really because the T eval doesn't change the integrator behavior, it just evaluates it. And so if you look at uh, what happened when we didn't do this, we only have one, two, three, four, five data points. And in fact, there is only one place where it crosses zero. And so this is too big of a step, right? If we go back to our solution, we see that there are three here, but essentially it skips from here to here. And so it misses uh, two of these zeros. So we have to be a little more clever and, and force the solver, change the behavior of the solver to not take such big steps. And the, the solution looks um, like this. We just have to give it a max step size so that it won't uh, go further than that. So this is my favorite way of doing that. Let's say x comma h, we're going to get a um, the step size directly from Linspace by setting an additional argument, return step equals true. So I previously did not do this and what we only had x, but when you say return step equals true, this will give you the spacing between all of the x arrays. And uh, this h then is the maximum step size that I want to use here. And what this will do is make sure that the integrator never takes too big of a step. And when we um, do this and run it, then we get uh, all of these uh, intermediate steps. And you see now that we get all three roots. So let's take a look now at the structure of, of the T events. T events is a list and it's a list for each event function. We only have one function here. So these are the events that occurred for the function that we defined. And these are the T values or the X values where they occurred. Y events is also a list and it has the Y events as an array for each one of the um, solutions. Now we only have one solution, so we have to get the array for the first event. And then within the array, we have to plot the first row in here. So let's plot, let's plot our solution. So first we do plot dot plot sol dot t sol dot y zero and that should give us now a nice looking solution like this and now let's plot the events. I think it's like this. And let's make these red circles. What do we have here? The wrong shape. Maybe it's just this. Okay. So these red circles are the three roots of our uh, of our equation, and we can uh, we can plot them or print them if you want. And it shows you uh, actually these are the the three zeros, and these are the three roots at minus six, minus two, and two. Now, if you um, if you are you know really skilled in numerical methods, you, you might recognize that we just have a polynomial that we're integrating. 
right? So up here, the solution to this is just a polynomial. And the, that polynomial is analytically known. Um, if you work it out, it's just something like um, x cubed plus 6x squared minus 4x minus 24. All right, and um, this has a, you can get the analytical roots of this with numpy.roots. So 1, 6, minus 4, minus 24, and that will give us uh, the three roots um, all together. This is just a special case, though, uh, for the polynomial, and it's not a general, uh, a general solution. And what I've shown you here is that we can, in general, find solutions to equations using solve IVP. We can also use uh, define events where we can see where the derivative is zero and a maximum, or derivative is zero and a minimum, or kind of any other function um, that you can imagine that is derivable from the solution of the ODE. All right, so that's, a, that's it for today. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick overview in probably like 20 minutes on how to solve a first order differential equation in the form of f prime of x equals uh, some function of x and y with an initial value. We use solve IVP for that. At a minimum, you define your function, the integration span, and the initial conditions, and then you get a solution um, that is at least good at the end of the interval. And if you want to have a, a more fine resolution, you can use T eval that uh, will evaluate the solution over the range. And if you want finer control over the maximum step size, then we use uh, this form uh, here. And that allows us to uh, control the max step size without uh, worrying about how big it's gonna be. Now, that's a little bit, um, maybe it's counterintuitive. Why would you use an adaptive step size and control the step size? Um, and it's just because we want to be able to control what the um, what we see in the output, so that we can make sure we're accurately getting all of these uh, all of these roots. All right, so that's it for today. Um, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, Lauren.